Hello there, and welcome back to The Disconnected. I've been running down some of my favorite physical media releases from the year in some various categories, and today we are gonna be discussing the best new label. When it comes to boutique physical media labels, there's always at least a couple every year that put out their first release, and some of them don't always get it right on the first try, but then some of them just plain nail it. And this year, we had a handful of some, some really great entries. Chameleon Films in Australia came out hard hitting with three really great titles. Uh, we got VH Shitfest, one of the new Vinegar Syndrome partner labels that's put out some, some really wacky titles to end the year out for us. Uh, really wanted to highlight Visual Vengeance, which is this new sub-label under Wild Eye, which classically Wild Eye's kind of been overlooked and relegated as this kind of shitty churn them out straight to DVD type titles. And the Visual Vengeance titles, they're, they're actually really fun and they're going all in on packaging and on special features, highlighting some old like shot on video and uh, maybe, maybe some shot on film titles that are just under scene because it's from that particular scene. But We've been seeing a lot more of those through many of these labels actually this year. So it's just a, a new genre that they've been hitting pretty hard. And uh, the final two that really were special for me are the ones that I wanted to highlight today. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to say one of these is better than the other because they are both just exceptional at what they do. And uh, surprisingly, they are both Vinegar Syndrome partner labels. And I'm sure by now most of you know who I'm going to be talking about. The first one has absolutely killed it. It seems like every single title they put out is uh, prestigious in, in one way or another, uh, except for maybe Amityville Curse, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that one in just a second. The, the releases from them are very high quality. We are getting a stupendous amount of extras, and that is Canadian International Pictures. And the titles they put out this year, I don't even know if this is all of them. Uh, this is just what I had nearby. The Mob, uh, a film that a lot of people have responded very well to, one that I, I hope more people are checking out as they are seeing it in sales and stuff like that. The next one that I have here is The Kid Brother, uh, one that is a story that a lot of people grabbed onto the moment it got released, and I, I'm glad that people are learning about Kenny and, and that story. And then we have Nobody Waved Goodbye. This is yet another one that, that came out from them that uh, I... I'm just shocked how sort of under the radar some of these films went when we are so close to Canada here in the U.S. and we just simply do not embrace some of the films. Uh, maybe the the biggest title that they put out this year because of the name Buster Keaton, we got Buster Keaton Rides Again this year. And uh, they also had on here Helicopter Canada. It is this really interesting double feature of films that... Uh, I, I think kind of lit the, the site on fire when this got up because a lot of people gravitated towards this, grabbed it, and have seemed to love it. And Canadian International Pictures has not disappointed this entire year. Uh, two more here that I wanted to share. Amityville Curse, I brought this up just a minute ago. Um, this sold out very quickly for the slipcover. Uh, I don't know why they only did a thousand copies of it, but it is a title that is, it's not a great film, but it's, it's an important film. And uh, of course, with the, the name Amityville, it's attached to a famous franchise. So that, that's pretty neat, but i um, glad we got this from them. I love the art on the back of this slip primarily. Uh, really, really great releases. And again, the special features that they get on these, like Amityville Curse, some of the things that they have on here, uh, this is featuring an audio commentary with Paul Karup of Canuxploitation.com and film historian Jason Pachonsky. There is a 16-minute interview with the director, Tom Barry. There is an interview with actress Donna Whiteman on here, shooting Amityville, an interview with the cinematographer Rodney Gibbons. There is uh, Gibbons reflecting on his entire body of work. There's also a booklet in here, which is just great to see, featuring a new motion picture purgatory comic strip by Rick Trembles and an interview with Ghost Hunter and author Alexander Holzer. There's also a uh, reversible cover artwork, and they just, again, OCN and their partner labels are really putting attention to detail on many of these releases. They could just release the film and probably still sell fairly well on some of these, but no, 
they're, they're going the extra mile. And the newest one that just came in from Canadian International Pictures have not been able to do anything with yet, but it's got a very recognizable face and name with it. Uh, this is Donald Pleasance in The Rainbow Boys. And again, can't wait to see it. I am I'm very eager to see what this label continues to put out because they've chosen very well. And the potential for basically any Canadian film is immense. There's so many so many great films that have come out from Canada that I, I'm just eager to see what well they dive into next. It's not been very genre focused, obviously. There's just a lot of Canada present and that's how it should be with a label like that. So I'm glad that we're getting that. The next one. Uh, so this is kind of a, a big deal label for me. I've got like a 85 minute interview with the, the two gentlemen behind this label and that is Deaf Crocodile. They originally made their name for doing a restoration for John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. It is uh, supposedly, I've not been able to see it yet, but supposedly this incredible 4K restoration that looks way better than it ever has before. It was meticulously restored and you you can see that in the work that they're putting out, how much uh, primarily Craig uh, from Deaf Crocodile puts into their restorations. And it is just a work of love that comes through on every single one of their releases. Uh, the I believe this was their first title, if I'm remembering right. This is The Unknown Man of Shandigore, and this title was lost for decades, and it's a very interesting film. It starts off with some really funny dialogue. Uh, it's very similar to a few other titles that we've seen throughout history, but then again, it's very singular. It's, it's very much a film like no other at the same time. It is comical, sort of a spy thriller, and just overwhelmingly beautiful to look at which is kind of a running theme through all of the deaf crocodile releases uh the next one that was gorgeous through and through delta space mission a uh an animated film actually and one that they are hinting that there is like a, a sister release coming in 2023 and i cannot wait to see what they put out related to that next uh then they put out this box set that is stunning just ridiculously stunning i think this came out in june ish i want to say this is the time bending mysteries of sharam mokri i believe that's how you say his name uh this includes ashkan the charmed ring and other stories uh the film fish and cat invasion and careless crime and uh this is a, a slipcover release over this big uh extended like uh fat blu-ray case and it's just an amazing release got a really nice booklet it's a four disc release a a disc for each film and they they really did this filmmaker uh some wonderful justice in here because he got a lot of respect that you would not see in many other releases and to get them all in one package to allow for a deep dive into this director is very special uh then they gave us two others that are very closely related uh that is Ilya Muramets and the other one, well, let me show the back because this art is just immense. Very, very nice on there. Uh, the other one is Sampo. And these are films that were worked on internationally through cooperation of a couple different countries. And Deaf Crocodile has gone back to the material on these, made them look great, and put out something that is this incredible curio piece for uh, Western audiences that they've not seen these. And... Um, I, I believe it was Ilya Muramets that was shown as a different edit as a part of uh, the old like uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 or something like that years ago. I never got to see that, but to see that film now get this type of respect is incredible. I, I am mystified that we are able to get something like that in 2022 and that we're still seeing this type of love and passion put into these releases. And speaking of love and passion... Deaf Crocodile finished the year strong with the film that they've been talking about all year long. They held a fundraiser campaign to, to raise funds for the restoration for this, and that is Solomon King. This is a, a, a piece of lost media for decades that we now have in its entirety, fully restored. I love the back of this slipcover. Um, th this is a piece of uh, really interesting filmmaking that Belinda Watts, the the wife of the director is all over. She's very involved. And to see to see her husband get this type of respect in 2022 when he was uh, not seen as this uh, incredible filmmaker for years while he was alive, it's sad and poignant, obviously, but 
I I can't imagine how how proud she must be nowadays to see that. And I, I'm just glad that Deaf Crocodile took it upon themselves to deliver that. And it's uh, it's it's a beautifully restored film. Um, a, a lot of people are probably going to not love the film. It's not uh, an incredible piece of filmmaking necessarily, but to accomplish this type of release in the way that he did, and then to hear the stories on the extras is where this gets special. And the fact that Deaf Crocodile worked with UCLA and the wife and so many other entities to get the soundtrack remastered, to get the film restored, to put this out for the masses is an incredible accomplishment. And that's why these two labels from the OCN distribution side of things are really doing work that I think is special and important and really aligns with my mission for archiving films and for just spreading good art out there for people to enjoy and analyze and be uh, like reinvigorated and inspired by. And to see something like Solomon King, there, there are lots of ways to grab onto inspiration for a release like this. You can, you can be inspired to make your own film. You can be inspired to get into film restoration because uh, again, the work that they were able to accomplish here is nothing short of amazing. The original uh, film before they restored it was beyond yellowed. It was in ridiculously bad shape, dirt and hair all over it. It looked awful. And then the the videos that they've released showing the scenes pre-restoration and post-restoration together are immaculate and, and such an immense difference that I, I can see many people seeing this and running to research how to become somebody who's working in film restoration. So uh, to all the new labels this year, obviously they're they're likely not going to see this, but uh, I wanted to say a deep heartfelt thank you for continuing to keep this going and doing what you can to keep film restoration and film preservation alive and well all throughout 2022. And until the next video, thank you and have a good night.